Chapter 551, Changbai Mountains It was no easy feat to attract the attention of the big families, because each of them had their own arrangements and main areas of activities. Hence, those based in regions too far away from Luo City would not bother to take a chance in such competitions. Most of the clans were prudent risk-takers. They could reach sensible conclusions after weighing the pros and cons of their decisions. Thus, they would not hastily jump at the seeming benefits despite their full understanding of the importance of cultivation and the power struggle for secret resources. There were specially trained geniuses within each family, such as Chen Zuan from the Chen family, Su Wenqin from the Su family and Gao Shenin from the Gao family of Danzhou. It was extremely resource-consuming to cultivate geniuses, and the abundance of resources was a privilege not entitled to ordinary Daoyuan class students and other apprentices of the families. Nia Ting believed in the improvement of cultivation accessibility for practitioners from less privileged backgrounds. Hence, his leadership was strictly principle-led, with no tolerance for fake military contributions and no backdoors for influential families. To him, the sole criterion was one's cultivation aptitude. He recognized that the heavenly network would thrive only with the removal of big families' monopoly over cultivation opportunities, because this era was one of limitless talents. In fact, Lu Xu was not aware that when he was sent to Japan, all other class aptitude geniuses who had participated in the special training, including Chao Qingxi and Chen Zuan, were on their own missions too. Chen Zuan was very unlucky. He had once imagined that it was a blessing to be able to attend the training with other geniuses, but it turned out that he had successfully caught Principal Nye's main attention. As a matter of fact, the ultimate goal of their current assignments was to stain their hands with more blood, so that they would gain a deeper insight into the real face of the cultivation realm. Those class aptitude geniuses would only be truly qualified as future mainstays after they had gone through hardships and bloodshed. Would Nia Ting feel sorry for the loss of class aptitude geniuses when they were executing their missions? Yes, he would. But it was imperative that elite fighters underwent tough training, just as iron must be smelted to form steel. Hence, in the meantime, Nia Ting was exerting pressure on the other geniuses as well. At the moment, Chao Qingxi had buried herself in the sand for a day and a night for an ambush mission in the desert. Her targets were three heavenly network traders who were fleeing westward from northwest China after they had sold confidential information of the network. Chao Qingxi's mission was to take their heads. The heavenly network had created a more stressful and harsh growth environment for the geniuses. Otherwise, how could they establish their footing amidst wealthy, more privileged apprentices from big families? Meanwhile, Li Ixiao sent a message to various big families, requesting for their assistance in getting rid of thousands of magical stones in his pocket. He claimed that he was about to abandon the Luo City black market and assured them of the truthfulness of his words. The families wondered, why does he sound like a street vendor? Li Ixiao's message was clear, though. He who is able to accept the stones at a reasonable price gets the black market. That sparked immense interest among the families. Was Heavenly King Li planning to retreat from the marketplace after this last transaction of his? However, they were slightly confused about the source of the stones, since this Heavenly King was widely known for his non-existent savings. Regardless, there was no harm to take a look. It might be a bit difficult to take in tens of thousands of magical stones, for billions of bucks could always be invested in other more worthy causes. In spite of their need for stones, too many of them would not be helpful either. In the past, there existed speculation about the possibility of trading in magical stones as a universal currency, among the cultivation realm. But now they had realized it was not that easy because they had to take into consideration the amount of supply and currency rates. However, the spatial distribution of stones in the world was still unknown. As a result, a new order based on magical stones currency was yet to mature. Hence, at the moment, these stones only served as cultivation resources. Big families were already on the move upon receipt of Li Yixiao's message. As Luo City was situated on the holy ground of one of the seven cultivation colleges, 
the location of its black market was geographically strategic. Thousands of miles away in the capital, Nieting's brows knitted together as he read through the report in his hands. He certainly has not learned his lessons from his reflection letter. The report stated that Li Xiao had contacted 11 famous families in the country and spread the information about the black market trading that involved thousands of magical stones. Among them, five families chose to stay put because of geographical distance, and they were afraid that other families might rob their fruits even if they could take down the market. It was like a chess game. Every move made must be calculated well to take into account its potential benefits and costs. The remaining six families had sent representatives to Luo City. They were both interested in rolling in the stones for their apprentices' use and gaining control over the Luo City black market, which was of strategic significance. Shu Xuejin asked curiously, he must have collaborated with Lu Xu, don't you think? How else could a poor man like him churn out so many magical stones? Certainly. In that case, our speculation is proven right. The thousands of stones stolen from the collection of gods are indeed in his possession. Nya Ting smoothed his knitted brows. Are you considering breaking the ice to have a good chat with Lu Xu? Shi Xue Jin put his book aside and said, I think there's no harm doing that. Nya Ting's brows quivered slightly. Doesn't matter. It's only a few thousand stones. Not a big deal. Who knows, maybe this incident will teach him about the abundance of resources overseas. After a long silence, Nye Ting suddenly continued, the puppet master wants to establish himself in Europe, but he failed to defeat the Department of Faith theory. I guess he may divert his attention elsewhere. The Americas have Phoenix Society and the Saint, so his chances there are slim too. I'm afraid he may be interested in the Middle East and Australia, though I am more inclined towards the former, Nye Ting said. Shi Xue Jin deliberated and asked, is it possible that he may roll in Indian practitioners? Though outwardly flourishing, India nowadays had actually dried up in its cultivation scene. Most of their top fighters had fallen. Coupled with their rich cultivation resources and big population, Many practitioners had exchanged their souls for powers with the devils. Thus, it was perfectly possible, even though they might be aware that the puppet master was not human. Besides, the puppet master could do evil. Nye Ting commented, be more careful about his directions. However, I have no time for that. I am leaving for the Chengbai Mountains the day after tomorrow. Shi Xue Jin gave a nod of understanding. Sure. That's more important. But they did not mention a single word about why Nye Ting must head to the Chengbai Mountains no matter what. Chapter 552 Lu Xiaoyu Convincing the Public Watch out for Li Xiao's movements. He can sell his magical stones but not the black market. It is located too close to the seven cultivation colleges, Nye Ting instructed calmly, it is a matter of principle. Shi Xue Jin was slightly distressed. Why did Li Xiao and Lu Xu purposely choose to cause trouble at this time, when Nye Ting was going to be away from the capital? However, he had certain confidence in adhering to Nye Ting's principle. For some reason, Shi Xue Jin was not very concerned. He believed that the two fellows were aware of the bottom lines. Just when the big families were rushing to Luo City and Nye Ting was about to leave for the Changbai Mountains, Lu Xu and Li Xiao were busy discussing how to inconvenience others. No, they were discussing how to make money. As for Lu Xiaoyu, she had reached the camp at the peripheral region of Yuzhou. This time, there were more than 10,000 Daoyuan class students from the three provinces. It was not a big number, but they could form a sea of people when all of them gathered together. The entire military camp seemed to have been constructed specially for new recruits from Daoyuan class every year. The officers were dressed in official training uniforms and girls and boys were strictly separated into two regions. Now, it was obvious that there were slightly fewer girls than boys. It was not because girls had weaker aptitude. Actually, it had long since been verified that the number of potential female practitioners were about 10% more than that of males, 
for some reason. But it was a different situation here, because the students were allowed to quit before the camp, and more girls chose to do so. Gender equality remained a hotly disputed topic. In fact, however, even females themselves sometimes considered themselves as physically weaker than their male counterparts, though it may not be true in reality. Yet, historical stereotypical views ingrained in people's minds had to take the blame. Lu Xiaoyu was an exception. She had a reasonably good height, because puberty happened to coincide with her cultivation training. Many people had noticed an improvement in their appearance following their training, including better skin texture and height. Some students even soared to 178 centimeters from 170 centimeters, within merely one year. This was because cultivation could help to remove impurities from their bodies, which served to compensate for their inborn physical defects. Hence, they tended to be more physically flawless than common teenagers. However, instead of covering for her defects, Xiaoyu was gifted with the skills of animal whispering since youth. She was almost a perfect being. Consequently, she was also stronger than her peers when it was time to grow. It might also explain her naturally beautiful appearance. Yet, the truth was uncertain because she still did not know anything back then. The students collected their uniforms and were allocated to various rooms. Lu Xiaoyu made her bed quietly. There were 20 people and 10 bunk beds per room. She chose the bottom bed for easier accessibility. The room was packed with people. When Lu Xiaoyu was still making her bed, someone suddenly threw her blanket and pillow onto Lu Xiaoyu's bed. Go and sleep on the upper bed, little bean sprout. Lu Xiaoyu raised her head to see a tall girl with a finely developed figure. She had an arrogant air, and there were five girls standing beside her giggling at Lu Xiaoyu. Little Bean Sprout Lu Xiaoyu raised her eyebrows and looked at her own chest. Under Lu Xu's protection, Lu Xiaoyu had never been bullied by other students. She did not know that sometimes her attractive appearance could become the target of other girls' jealousy. But bullying among schoolgirls was simply too commonplace. Usually, being surrounded by so many people, the victim would naturally feel scared. But they had really picked the wrong person. Lu Xiaoyu fixed the girl a calm stare. She should probably have said something such as, Excuse me? What for? Who the hell are you? But Lu Xiaoyu was not like anybody else. Before the girl could react, she had been kicked into the wall with a bang. Since all of them were practitioners, Lu Xiaoyu thought it would be fine so long as nothing serious happened. She could pepper the room with her deep sea white sand bullets if she felt like killing and no one could stop her. The girl's followers were dumbfounded. They were freaking waiting for Lu Xiaoyu to say something. But she was too straightforward. She did not act as expected. Officer. Officer. A girl immediately dashed out of the room. Doctor. Doctor. One girl has fainted. Lu Xiaoyu asked the other girls with a sneer, I reckon you were quite happy a minute ago? All of a sudden, the entire room devolved into chaos. She was not a fan of courtesy, but more of a mocker after beating others up. After all, she had to be decisive to be a future heavenly king. Lu Xu's words were engraved in Lu Xiaoyu's head. She had to be strong and able to convince the public in order to be qualified as a heavenly king. So how about this? At the moment, her action could show her power and make people succumb to her at the same time. Perfect. Two female officers entered the room and asked the girls, what happened? Lu Xiaoyu replied calmly, they wanted to bully me. So I beat them up. At first, the girls had expected some punishment for Lu Xiaoyu, but the officers only carried the injured girl out without a word. Officer, don't you think you should do something about her? A girl demanded. One of the officers turned and looked into her eyes. She alone can take down so many of you. So why did you offend her? First lesson of the cultivation world, no one should judge a book by its cover. 
one's power is not determined by his or her look nor the number of followers, but the amount of effort he or she puts in. Lu Xiaoyu thought to herself that actually she had not put in much effort, but she chose to remain silent. After this incident, Lu Xiaoyu could be certain that the public would now listen to her. As expected, everything was under her control. For cases of school violence, it was usually a bunch of girls bullying one girl. But Lu Xiaoyu was better. She could bully a bunch on her own. At this moment, Lu Xiaoyu noticed a rapid increase in her celestial strength. Apparently Lu Xu was eating abyss fruits. However, she was somewhat confused. Was there some sort of connection between abyss fruits and her bullying others? She must figure out what Lu Xu had been hiding from her after she went home this time. All of Luo City Daoyuan class students knew Lu Xiaoyu. But this time there were many from other cities too. Many Luo City Daoyuan class students were secretly worried when they heard about the noise in Lu Xiaoyu's room, because they knew how destructive she was. A group of girls spectated along the corridors and waited. As expected, before long, a casualty was carried out of the room. Carefully they took a look inside the room, only to see Lu Xiaoyu standing proudly in the center of the room like the Monkey King who had just wreaked havoc in the Heavenly Palace, while the rest were obediently lying down like quails. Chapter 553 Lu Xiaoyu the Hero All the class aptitude geniuses had been sent out on tasks by Nia Ting. There was no one in the military camp who could stand up to Lu Xiaoyu. She did not deal with it too harshly. Lu Xu had talked to her about this earlier. Even if she got into a fight with the Daoyuan class students, she could not injure or kill them. She had to set proper limits on her strength. Thus, when those girls regained consciousness, they did not suffer any major injuries. After they returned to the dorm from the infirmary, Lu Xiaoyu sat on the edge of her bed and texted Lu Xu while coldly laughing. The girls hid and whispered to one another in a corner. Lu Xiaoyu did not bother to know what they were discussing about. Still haven't convinced the public, Lu Xiaoyu softly sighed as she glanced at them. She had thought that convincing the public would be very easy, but it seemed like she had thought too lightly of it. But this wouldn't do. She wanted to become a heavenly king. In reality, some girls were very narrow-minded. The girls that Lu Xiaoyu had beaten up were from the same Daoyuan class. People joined forces more easily when they were on away ground. The girls discussed that they would wait until Lu Xiaoyu fell asleep, then subdue her. Lu Xiaoyu holding back her strength had made these girls misunderstand, they were taken down one by one just now because they were careless. This time, they would wait until nightfall before they launched their sneak attack. They would definitely be able to take revenge. Normally, people would be troubled when they encountered these kinds of girls. You could not stay awake for the whole night, can you? But these girls have come well prepared to retaliate. What would you do? Normally, people would be slightly worried. But Lu Xiaoyu was more impressive. Once the lights were out at night, Lu Xiaoyu sat up straight on her bed. The entire dorm fell silent. Before the girls could make their move, Lu Xiaoyu once again beat them up. The painful wails in the dorm sounded as if they were in hell. The girls were speechless. What was this? Before they could even do anything, Lu Xiaoyu had already made the first move. Can't you follow the plan? As Lu Xiaoyu attempted to convince them, all the girls in the dorm realized one thing. This young girl that they had underestimated was much stronger than they had imagined. Lu Xiaoyu was also very vexed. Why was it so difficult to convince them? In less than two days, Lu Xu realized that the distress points Lu Xiaoyu had helped him to earn were slowly increasing. He suspected that she had over a hundred abyss fruits. He felt that something was not right and hurriedly sent a message to Lu Xiaoyu, asking her what she was doing. Lu Xiaoyu replied that she was convincing the public. Um... He felt that there was something wrong with Lu Xiaoyu's understanding of convincing the public. How are you doing it? Lu Xu asked with caution. With my strength. Lu Xiaoyu replied with pride. 
In reality, Lu Xiaoyu did not think that she was wrong. If she submitted to humiliation, she would be the one being convinced. Why not be the one convincing the public, right? Someone else had initiated it. She was not the one who made the first move. Lu Xu was rather depressed. Lu Xiaoyu's talent with the Chinese language was somewhat twisted. The Heavenly Network realized one problem during the training process. Many people did not have the right mentality towards the training. Lu Xiaoyu had completed every task well. After all, she was a future heavenly king and she should set a good example. But many of the other girls were not as good. Even though they had become practitioners, they were still very delicate and fragile. At 5 a.m., an emergency assembly alarm suddenly sounded throughout the entire camp. Everyone, no matter if they were boy or girl, was in a frenzy. When everyone had assembled at the training ground, many had not worn their clothes properly. Many of the command officers' faces were as black as coal. The overall commander stood at the flag-raising podium and coldly gave everyone an admonishing talk. The performance of the girls during this training has been very poor. This is not because of the lack of your abilities. It is because of your complete lack of fighting spirit. This was a common fault among many female practitioners. Take for example Aimee who had engaged in backdoor deals with the Phoenix Society back at the Koh Chang Island remains. She had no fighting spirit, because she did not think about depending on her own abilities to fight. Do you think that if a large-scale war breaks out between practitioners, your male comrades should risk their lives for you? While you sing and dance in your culture groups to express your sympathy, or simply join the medical team? The commanding officer laughed coldly. That is in the past. All of you will step on the battlefield. Don't leave it to luck. There is no difference between male and female on the battlefield. From what I know, there is a genius girl in the Luo City Daoyuan class who is much stronger than all of you. The Heavenly Network has just reported her military achievements. Her name is Chao Qingxi. There are always girls complaining during the training. As practitioners, if you cannot even endure standing at attention for an hour, only death awaits you on the battlefield in the future. Do you think that the enemy will take pity on you because you are a girl? Ha! <laughs> ha! From my knowledge, not only will they not take pity on you, they will use more cruel methods to defeat you. Is it very strenuous to run 10 kilometers with a heavy load on your back? The normal military troops run 5 kilometers with a heavy load. You all are a few times stronger than them, maybe even more than 10 times stronger than them, the commanding officer lectured. So I see that you have not changed your mentality. From now onwards, you will receive cruel training. Some girls softly whispered, is there a need for this? I thought this was just normal military training. Military training? The commanding officer laughed coldly. Do you think that we brought you here for some painless training? To let you rest after every half an hour? To let you chit-chat and use your phone while resting? Wake up. The aim of this training is to wake you up from your sweet dreams. Everyone had thought that this would be a simple lecture. They did not think that the commanding officer would actually carry out what he had said. The commanding officer said, everyone will line up and engage in actual combat. Those who lose will run for 12 hours with a heavy load and have no food to eat for a day. Those who cheat will be sent to the military court. I believe that I do not have to explain the consequences. Don't trust your luck. Actual combat? What was happening? Why the sudden actual combat? They had not gone through combat training, but they were starting actual combat? Everyone looked at one another in blank dismay. Not only were the girls shocked, even the boys were in shock as well. If Lu Xu was here, he would make the following judgment. Perhaps Mia Ting had sensed that the form of the practitioner's world was unpredictable. Or, different remote races like the Puppet Master had revived, giving the human race great pressure. Thus, Mia Ting would make such a harsh decision. They had completely given up on making steady progress incrementally during the training process. 
A decisive action in a complex situation would allow all the Daoyuan class students to climb out of their warm nest and prepare to face the chilly winter. This chilly winter may come this year, or next year, or even later in the future. But Nye Ting did not want the heavenly network to be full of children who had not been weaned when the time came. Chapter 554 No Worthy Opponent but the one thing that Nye Ting did not want to see the most would be, that one day in the future, the heavenly network would have people who lacked strength of character and end up putting their fate in the hands of others, when they were on their last legs. He hoped that since everyone who joined the heavenly network did so willingly, they would have the courage to pick up their weapons and protect themselves. Not only did they have to protect themselves, they also needed the courage to protect their home behind them. One company consisted of 90 to 120 people. Here, it was set at 100 people. This meant that 100 boys and girls of the Daoyuan class were about to engage in actual combat. Those who won had food to eat and those who lost would go hungry. These groups of boys and girls were arranged by the commanding officers. Each company stood 50 meters away from each other. The atmosphere became heavy. Everyone knew that this was the real deal. To speak the truth, the boys did not quite dare to attack the girls. Their gentlemanliness made them think they should let the girls have a chance. They did not mind running and eating less. In reality, a majority of the guys thought the same way. There was no harm letting the girls have a chance. This could even make them more liked by the girls. Of course, they could not cheat in public. When the first company of boys and girls started their combat, some boys seemed to be attacking fiercely, but in reality they were just acting. But after one second of combat, the overall commander stopped them. He laughed coldly, I had wanted to execute one of you as a warning to the rest. To think there were people who were actually willing to sacrifice themselves. He pointed at two boys and said, bring those two away. Don't leave them here to make a fool of themselves. Bring them to the secured waiting room. They will wait for their punishment. Everyone was in awe and shock. Were they for real? The overall commander glanced at everyone. Don't do something that you will regret for the rest of your life. You may be willing to sacrifice yourself to help others, but will others do the same for you? The girls were slowly breaking down. Some had even given up all hope. These girls did not even do housework at home, but on their third day of training, they already had to fight each other. They began to hope that there would be boys who were willing to go easy on them. But when it came to the second group, the boys were made very clear of the rules. They had to fight. The girls could not help but want to retreat. But at this moment, Lu Xiaoyu passed through the troop and came to the front of the girls. She looked at everyone and calmly said, Follow me. These two calm words were like the undercurrents raging in the deep sea. Lu Xiaoyu was now standing in front of everyone with immense arrogance. It was as if the sun and the moon were once again fighting over control of the skies. Everyone's impression of Lu Xiaoyu was not very good. She had beat people up for a whole day. How could one have a good impression of her? Thus, throughout these three days, Lu Xiaoyu had been eating alone and washing her clothes alone, as if she had been isolated. But many people did not intentionally isolate her, they just did not dare to approach her. But when Lu Xiaoyu stood in front of everyone and said the two words, follow me, the girls behind her suddenly seemed to have found their pillar of support. During times like this, someone had to stand up and call for action. Lu Xiaoyu was that someone. She only felt that these girls were too terrified, there was nothing to be afraid of, but everyone else thought differently. The girls felt that Lu Xiaoyu was like a hero, going out into battle while facing the sun. When she made her triumphant return, they would drink hard liquor. They would once again set their eyes on the edge of the world in the distance. Even Lu Xu had probably not thought that Lu Xiaoyu would be able to convince the public by accident. Even the girls who had been beat up by Lu Xiaoyu felt that Lu Xiaoyu had become much bigger, but Lu Xiaoyu's figure was undoubtedly thin. The next moment, Lu Xiaoyu moved her body and rushed into the boys' team head first like an arrow at lightning speed. 
In an instant, she threw the boys into confusion. No one could avoid her attacks. One by one, everyone was thrown down to the ground with a punch. These boys were indeed much stronger than the girls. But Lu Xiaoyu had killed people with Lu Shu before. The fresh blood she had experienced put her on a completely different level from the rest. Upon seeing this, the girls looked at one another in blank dismay before gritting their teeth and following Lu Xiaoyu's lead. At first, they were very cautious. But as time passed, the boys realized that these girls were ruthless when they attacked. This was their true strength. They were practitioners. There was no difference between the genders. This the was the cruel reality. The commanding officers were in shock. Who is that girl? The one who had given Lu Xu the title of national hero, Lu Xiaoyu, another commanding officer said in annoyance while biting his gums. Lu Xu's little sister? The overall commander picked his eyebrows. The brother is violent and the little sister is so violent too. Hmm. Have you seen Lu Xu before? A command officer asked curiously. Yes, the overall commander somewhat awkwardly nodded his head. I came into contact with him in the capital. These commanding officers had been transferred from the Heavenly Network. As for where they were before they had been transferred. Back then, he was a soldier under Hao Jichao. He had even been chased and beaten up by Lu Xu when he was left alone. He could not bear to look back on the past. Lu Xu probably did not think that the person he had beaten up in the past would become the current overall commander. Lu Xiaoyu charged into battle quickly and finished the battle quickly too. She had completely overpowered everyone else with her own abilities. She had shuttled back and forth in the battle, making it hard for her opponents to ward against her. This was like playing a 5v5 game, where nine of them were rookies and one had overbearing power. This normally led to one person carrying the entire battle. If these boys had gone through training for military strategies and learned to work together, the situation would have been much better. But now, it was different. They did not work together. Furthermore, their abilities were lacking. The only thing they could do was wait to be beaten up. When all the boys had collapsed to the ground, Lu Xiaoyu quietly stood in the middle of the battleground and sighed. No worthy opponent here. What a far cry from Lu Xu. The boys were in so much pain that they could not speak. But they had one question. Who was this Lu Xu? At this moment, everyone suddenly thought of the recent official announcement from the Heavenly Network. It couldn't be the Lu Xu who had killed a Class B expert at Ko Chang Island, right? How could they compare against his strength? He was a legend. I am not targeting anyone. I am just saying that everyone on the floor is rubbish. Lu Xiaoyu had gotten into character. She had not realized that the girls behind her were looking at her in a different light. Humans had the habit of thinking that internal violence was not true violence. But when Lu Xiaoyu was able to lead them to win a fight, everyone would acknowledge her abilities. On the other hand, Lu Xu was earning an endless flow of distress points. There was too much for the eyes to take in. Earlier, the points had been earned from female names, but this time it was a wave of male names. He hesitated for a long time whether he wanted to ask Lu Xiaoyu about it. Was the situation still under control? Chapter 555, Gathering at Luo City Far away in Luo City, Lu Xu was not quite sure of what had happened over on Lu Xiaoyu's side. It was not that he had not asked Lu Xiaoyu about this, it was just that he had never told Lu Xiaoyu about the distress points. He could not just open his mouth and ask what had happened. Lu Xiaoyu would suspect that something was wrong. Thus, Lu Xu asked indirectly, Xiaoyu, how are you getting along with your comrades? Lu Xiaoyu replied happily, I've beaten them into a consensus. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. You mean metaphorically, right? Nope. I've beaten them into a consensus, Lu Xiaoyu replied with confidence. Lu Xu did not dare to ask further. 
As for how the students were doing, it had nothing to do with him. Now, Lu Xu spent the day meticulously revising his content. At night, he would change his appearance and go to the black market with Li Xiao. The representatives of each family had arrived. At this age, transport was very convenient, thus, they only took a few hours before they reached Luo City. Some felt that this was not good. They yearned for the past, where cars, horses, and mail were all slow. It was as if they could only love one person throughout their entire life. But Lu Xu felt that people did not cease to be loyal because of this. Were there so few people in history who were fickle and heartless? Not at all. Even if the cars, horses, and mail were all slow, there would be times when people ceased to be faithful even before mailing out their letter. After the families reached Luo City, they did not rush to interact with Li Xiao. Before they had left home, they were all rather panicky. But after reaching Luo City, they realized that there was no need to do so. In reality, they were all afraid that Li Xiao would demand an exorbitant price. Li Xiao would also have to talk to all the families before making his decision, right? Thus, they were waiting for Li Xiao. The bell rang, signaling the end of school. Lu Xu calmly walked out. It was as if the moment the school bell rang, normal life and the practitioner's life were split apart. A few boys who were in their sophomore year did not plan to study hard. After school ended, they either ran to the internet cafe or the field. A student passionately engaged in a discussion as he walked out of school. Did you guys hear? Luo City is now very lively. Many practitioners and big families have come here. I've heard. There have even been discussions on the Golden Foundation Forum. It seems like all of them came here for something. But no one has specified what exactly they are here for. It would be great if I could awaken too. Who is the one who organized this large occasion? As the two students chatted happily, they suddenly looked up and saw Lu Xu in front of them. They hurriedly stopped talking and walked past Lu Xu. After they had created some distance between them, they once again restarted their discussion. They did not know that what they were talking about was because of this very student that they disliked. Lu Xu turned back and looked at the school building against the dusk sky. He then turned his body and walked towards the black market. He suddenly thought of one problem. He had returned from the collection of gods in the middle of January. Chinese New Year was coming, yet Lu Xiaoyu was to be at training for three months. Did this mean that he had to celebrate the New Year alone? As he thought about this, he reached the entrance of the black market. The iron gate had specks of rust. Lu Xu knocked on the gate. A new face opened the small window above the door. When he saw Lu Xu, his eyes lit up and smiled obsequiously. The Venerable. You're here. Lu Xu was still using Gao Shanin's face. His nickname was still Kasayapa. Now there were two important figures within the black market, one was called the Lord, while the other was called Kasayapa. The two names sounded quite natural next to each other. Wang Zhe had disappeared. This low-level secret practitioner had taken advantage of the chaos to steal one of Lu Xu's magical stones and make a run for it. This was not new. Lu Xu felt it was best that Wang Zhe did not appear in front of his eyes again. To Lu Xu, stealing one of his magical stones and running away was equivalent to asking for murder. Not even one magical stone could be stolen. Lu Xu walked along the bomb shelter and then entered it. The secret practitioners on the street greeted him very politely. One middle-aged, big-sized man saw Lu Xu enter and his face lit up in pleasure. The Venerable, I have some good alcohol here. How about a taste? Lu Xu laughed and tactfully rejected him. No thanks. How good can your alcohol be? From Zhang Tiango's distress, plus 199. After Lu Xu walked away, a group of old men sighed in annoyance. The venerable is so harsh when he rejects others. But they rather like dealing with Lu Xu. Lu Xu was just too kind. 
This made Lu Xu's classmates rather unhappy. But these old secret practitioners were comparing Lu Xu to the people they had met in the past. Those people were thick-skinned and ruthless. One wrong word and they were as good as dead. But Lu Xu gave off a different feeling. They felt that as long as they paid their processing fees, Lu Xu would not make things difficult for them. Everyone knew that Lu Xu was the sword expert from that night. He had displayed his frightening, destructive power that night. He was not someone that these secret practitioners could go against. But they did not know that Lu Xu's true identity was that of a captain in the Heavenly Network. They similarly did not know that Lu Xu was able to come to an agreement with their lord. The secret practitioners had also heard the rumors. According to the rumors, the big families had come to Luo City to make a deal with the Lord. Two may keep counsel putting one away. Lu Xu thought that since the secret practitioners all knew about this, then on Ye Ting's side, they had no choice but to carry on. Withdrawing was not an option. He could only silently wish Li Xiao all the best. Once the secret practitioners knew that the big families were coming, they immediately called their companions over. In the eyes of the secret practitioners, these families were all rich. They did their business precisely because they wanted to change their lives and have a better future. This time, secret practitioners from all over the country were gathering in Luo City. If he had not seen it for himself, Lu Xu would find it hard to believe that there were so many practitioners who had fallen through the cracks across the country. Many people did not inherit their abilities. A large majority had embarked on this path because they had suddenly undergone an awakening. This was similar to what was happening overseas. Some female secret practitioners saw that Lu Xu was young, strong, and rather good-looking. They wanted to hook up with him. If they could do so, they would no longer have to rush about with these old men. But Lu Xu did not fall for them. This made the girls disinterested. From their point of view, there must be a lot of girls outside who liked him. He was rich, strong, and most importantly, young. Lu Xu walked all the way into Li Xiao's office. Before he had even reached the entrance, he could hear Nalan K angrily shouting at him. Look at all these trivial things you have done. Li Xiao unhappily said, Can you think about my good points as well? Nalan K fell silent for two seconds. Look at all these good things you have done. Li Yixia was speechless. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know. Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens